Hello bookish friends, uh, welcome to uh, my April wrap up part 1. In this video uh, I will talk about uh, the 8 works uh, that I finished in the uh, first half of April and I will put the uh, clips uh, that I uh, recorded uh, at the time that I uh, finished uh, those books. In this 15 days I read uh, many different genres in many different formats. So this month uh, was another month uh, that was the proof of my very diverse reading. Today is the 5th of uh, April and I finished my first novel uh, for April. But first of all, uh, I'm going to talk about uh, the uh, picture book uh, that I read uh, in the weekend uh, for a uh, picture this readathon. This readathon is hosted by uh, Jack at uh, Spread a Book Joy and uh, Shelly at uh, Shelly Swear Engine. Uh, they have uh, six prompts uh, that I decided to read. A picture book uh, for uh, one prompt uh, each weekend. Uh, and uh, the prompt uh, that I choose uh, for uh, this weekend uh, was uh, Space. I read a, a picture book that I found in uh, Ar archive.org uh, which was called uh, Picture Me in the Future by Craig uh, Strasforher. It was actually a peel and press book. I enjoyed looking at the pictures of this book uh, very very much but it was uh, geared towards of course uh, <laughs> very young children uh, so it was a very simple uh, story. <laughs> On the other hand it was interesting how uh, they thought uh, the world would be in 21st century, uh, at the beginning of the century. How uh, different uh, it is from today's world. Anyway, because of its cuteness, I gave this picture book a 6 out of 10. Today I finished uh, Sparkling Cyanide by Agatha Christie. This was the book that I was reading for Christa Fest. Uh, and uh, it was my uh, first time reading this Agatha Christie book. I listened uh, to this uh, novel. Uh, as an audiobook, uh, which was narrated by Hu Fraser. And if you like audiobooks, uh, I would strongly advise uh, the Hu Fraser version. Uh, in this book, Rosemary Barton is found uh, that uh, in her birthday uh, celebration. Although it is thought that uh, she had taken her own life uh, by uh, drinking a cyanide uh, drink, Rosemary's husband uh, is not very sure about uh, this uh, verdict of suicide. He decides to uh, confront uh, the, the other uh, five people along with himself uh, in that celebration uh, to the birthday celebration of her uh, sister-in-law. And he also uh, consults uh, Connell Race, who has appeared in Christie's previous books, to help him uh, solve the murder. Very curious things happen uh, in the second celebration. I very much enjoyed uh, reading uh, this uh, novel. It was very fast-paced and I wanted to keep on listening uh, to the uh, book uh, because I wanted to find out what, what was happening. I especially liked uh, the uh, first part of the book uh, in which uh, uh, the events uh, leading up to the second celebration uh, is uh, given uh, from the points of view of the six people present in the uh, first party in which Rosemary Barton died. And to be honest, uh, I had no idea who the uh, guilty party was uh, up until the very last chapters of the book. Um, and uh, I had a strong suspect in which I turned out to be very wrong about. Being a, a dedicated mystery reader, I love being surprised that a Christie does this best uh, in her novels. Uh, I had a, a a very little problem about the motive. We were not uh, given uh, the sufficient clues uh, to find out about the uh, motive of the suspicious party. Other than that, uh, I quite enjoyed uh, reading this mystery and uh, I gave it an 8 out of 10. It is the 8th of uh, April uh, and uh, I finished uh, two books today. Uh, the first book that I finished uh, was the uh, book that, uh, that I picked uh, from my series cup uh, in March, Crest by Marissa Meyer. Uh, this is the third main book uh, in Lunar Chronicles series, which is the young adult sci-fi series in which uh, fairy tales are uh, retold uh, with a very different uh, sci-fi and feminist uh, perspective. 
in this book as well as uh, continuing to follow Cinder and Scarlet uh, who were the heroines uh, in the previous two books. We are also introduced to Cress who is the equivalent of Rapunzel in fairy tales. Uh, and uh, in order not to give spoilers, uh, I cannot say much, uh, but uh, I can say that uh, we follow uh, the relationship that Chris uh, forms with uh, Captain Thorn and the heroines and other characters that we met in the previous books. Um, first of all, uh, I really loved uh, this installment uh, in this series. Uh, and uh, I, I loved uh, the character of Chris uh, more than uh, the other heroines, although I, I was quite fond of uh, Cinder especially. And uh, her uh, budding romance with uh, Thorne uh, was uh, one of the sweetest uh, romances uh, that I have read uh, in uh, young adult books. Uh, like in the previous books, I'm really loving the complex plot of the books as well as uh, the sci-fi world uh, that uh, Marissa Meyer created for this uh, book quartet. Uh, it is such a rich world which she expands so professionally in each book. I really do like uh, the writing style of uh, Marissa Meyer. It's not simple yet. Uh, it is very easy to follow and I love the fact uh, that uh, we do not stop following uh, the other heroines uh, in the previous books. I've grown to uh, love uh, Cinder, Scarlet and Wolf uh, much more uh, in these books. Uh, I'm still not very fond of uh, Emperor Kai but I think he, he will uh, grow on me more in the following book. Uh, which I plan to read even if I do not uh, pick uh, it from the cup. Uh, so in summary, I gave uh, Crest by Marissa Meyer a 9 out of 10. Uh, the second work that I finished today uh, was the stage play that I read for uh, Books of Alfred Hitchcock Project. This month I read uh, the stage play The Easy Virtue by Noel Coward, who was apparently a very famous uh, playwright uh, in those times. Uh, this play was adapted into uh, the uh, movie of the same name, uh, directed by Alfred Hitchcock in 1928. In this play, we mainly follow a family uh, obsessed with uh, morals uh, and uh, society norms, uh, with the exception of uh, the father. And uh, when uh, the son uh, of the family comes back home uh, with his new bride, uh, who was a divorced woman uh, and uh, much more older than him. Uh, the family uh, tries to cope uh, with this new reality and the struggles uh, that each character faces uh, is given in the play. Unlike the other three books that I've read uh, for this project, uh, I really didn't like uh, this stage play at all. Uh, the only redeeming quality was the ending, which I cannot tell because of the spoilers. The play dragged on and on about uh, the same uh, things. I felt like I was preached on uh, the uh, hypocrisy of the family, which was evidently true, but it was the only plot point uh, which made it very boring to read for me. I could have liked it uh, better if I had seen the stage play, but I'm not even sure about that, uh, because the pacing of the play is also very odd. Uh, the Easy Virtue by Neil Coward uh, was uh, a very uh, disappointing uh, read for me and uh, at least I'm glad it did not take me very long uh, to read uh, this stage play. To sum it up, uh, I gave uh, The Easy Virtue by Noel Coward a 5 out of 10. Today is the 11th of uh, April uh, and uh, I'm going to talk about uh, two very short works uh, that I finished uh, in the uh, previous uh, two days. Yesterday I read the second picture book uh, that I was reading uh, for a picture this readathon. Uh, this time uh, I read a, a Turkish uh, picture book uh, called uh, Pina and uh, it was written by uh, Elif Yemenici. In this picture book uh, Pina uh, is a uh, introvert who who is very afraid uh, to go out of uh, her house. Her uh, biggest uh, joy is to cook. When she is short of an ingredient one day, uh, 
e, she has to uh, go out then she learns the joys of being uh, social although she feels afraid at first um, I really did like this picture book uh, and uh, I rated it 8 out of 10 uh, please bear in mind uh, that I'm uh, rating this uh, as regards to what a picture book should be I think it was a very good story uh, which uh, teaches uh, children uh, to be more brave uh, and uh, to face their fears uh, in order to have um, more new adventures in life. Now, the second work that I finished uh, was the short story that I read for my Turkish Shelf project. I read The Snows of Clavangero by Ernest Hemingway. Part of the flashbacks in this short story takes place in uh, Istanbul, Turkey. In this short story, after a hunting accident in Clemangero, Henry has to stay in bed. During this time, uh, he remembers the horrors of uh, wars uh, that he faced uh, in his uh, past life uh, through flashbacks. I will talk about the Turkish aspect of this short story in a separate video. In general, I really hated the parts uh, which takes place uh, after the uh, hunting accident. Henry was very, very rude uh, to uh, his wife and uh, the things that uh, he thought were very misogynistic and uh, I have to say if it wasn't uh, for uh, my Turkish Shah project and if it wasn't a very short story I would have DNF'd it uh, in the beginning chapter uh, but, uh, but in the flashbacks uh, it was much more uh, meaningful and uh, the horrors of uh, the war and uh, the hardships that people uh, faced uh, because of the po because of some political uh, decisions uh, was uh, depicted uh, quite uh, accurately uh, because of Hemingway's past uh, as a uh, war correspondent uh, in many different uh, countries, including Turkey. In summary, uh, I gave uh, the short story "The Snows of Clemangero" uh, by Ernest Hemingway an average uh, rating, uh, which which is uh, six out of ten for me. is the uh, 13th of uh, April uh, and uh, I finished uh, my body read of uh, The Angels Game by uh, Carlos Ruiz Zafon uh, with Nikki at Red Dot Reads. Uh, uh, this is the uh, second book uh, in the series of uh, The Cemetery of Forgotten Books. Uh, Although this book was originally uh, written in Spanish, Nikki and I both read it in, uh, in its uh, English edition. In this book, uh, we follow David Martin. And at the beginning of the book, uh, he is a journalist who writes uh, crime stories in 1920s uh, Barcelona. And with the help of a benefactor, he becomes uh, the author of uh, a uh, very uh, famous uh, pulp fiction series called uh, The City of Damned. Uh, but uh, David uh, does not feel like uh, he is using his uh, full potential. And one day, uh, a bookseller, uh, whom he considers as a father figure, takes him uh, to a uh, magical library in which the books find their own owner. Finds a uh, very strange, uh, sort of like a religious text that was written by an author uh, with the same initials as uh, David. And a few days after, he is given an offer uh, to write uh, a similar book about religion by Andres Corelli, who always carries an angel brooch uh, in his uh, clothing. Uh, and after uh, David uh, accepts his offer and uh, starts to write his own uh, book about uh, religion, uh, his life changes and many many mysterious things uh, do happen surrounding this uh, very suspicious uh, boss Andres Corelli as well as the author of the book that David uh, took out from the library. First of all, I loved uh, the body reading experience with Nikki. I loved uh, chatting with her about the book, uh, like we did in the Joe Nesbo series. We made many uh, predictions. Some of them came true, but uh, many of them didn't come true. I especially loved the first uh, three quarters of the book. Uh, the mystery gradually increased, and I was blown away by the uh, really gothic, atmospheric writing style of Zafon. And uh, the city of Barcelona was a char character of its own. Uh, and uh, towards the end, uh, the book got uh, more and more exciting, uh, but uh, I have to say it lost its gothic atmosphere uh, because uh, 
uh, the book became uh, more like an action book uh, and uh, David uh, was a sort of like an action hero but because I was very much invested in the story uh, I was quite satisfied with the ending uh, because of the change in the uh, writing style which I loved very much in the first three quarters um, I gave the book uh, one less rating uh, than I originally thought that I would give and instead of 9, of, nine out of 10 I gave The Angel's Game 8 out of 10. Uh, I would uh, strongly advise uh, you to read this book if you like uh, gothic books because you will love the writing style no matter what the ending is. Today is the uh, 14th of April and uh, today I finished a novella, an e-arc uh, that I received uh, from uh, the site Book Sirens in exchange for an honest review. Uh, the name of the novella was A Stranger in the Storm by William Burton McCormick. This book was an historical urban mystery uh, book which takes place in Odessa in the year 1900. In this book, uh, two sisters, uh, Tasia and Eleni, are the daughters of a uh, landlady. And one day, uh, a lodger, who is an Englishman, comes to the pension and uh, pays lots of money to stay there. And in those days, uh, a serial killer who especially killed children, uh, Spectre, uh, was still not caught. Because of the uh, tenants' uh, very suspicious uh, actions, uh, the sisters uh, do, uh, do really wonder if their uh, new tenant uh, is, indeed, is indeed Spectre or not. I found uh, this novella very exciting and very fast-paced. Uh, and I finished uh, this work uh, in three days uh, at the same time that I was uh, reading The Angel's Game. Uh, and the fact that it was very much action-packed helped me to finish the book, of course. I found the writing style uh, to be decent. Uh, I didn't love it, but uh, there was nothing wrong with the writing style. I, I read that uh, the author uh, stayed in uh, Ukraine and Russia, uh, and it was uh, clearly shown uh, in the novella. I could picture the city of Odessa, even though I hadn't visited it, uh, very clearly. Uh, so uh, his descriptions of the city were excellent. On the other hand, uh, maybe because it was novella, uh, I found the characters uh, to be a bit flat. And with the exception of the uh, main character, uh, Tasya, uh, I have to admit, I didn't understand the motives of many of the characters. Uh, the mystery was interesting, although the solution was not surprising to me as a, as a lover of mystery. So in summary, uh, because it was a very decent historical mystery, I gave uh, this novella a 7 out of 10. So those were the 8 works uh, that I finished uh, in the first half of April. Uh, please comment down below, have you read any of the uh, works that I uh, mentioned in this video? And what did you think of them? Uh, and if you're a new viewer, first of all, welcome. Uh, please like and subscribe. Hope to see you very soon. Bye! As for Turkish word of the day, because I'm joining uh, Picture This Readathon, I thought picture should be the word of the day. Picture means resim. Turkish and resim is our Turkish word of the day. Have a good day.